Welcome to the Pilgrim's Well podcast. Pilgrim's Well is a resource for Christians wherever they are in their journey. We're excited to have you join us on this next episode. Hey guys, welcome back to the Pilgrim's Well podcast. Uh, my name is Alex Sikma, and this is Paul of England Hoven. We are getting back into our Pilgrim's Journey episodes once again. So last time we left off where Christian was in the Valley of the Shadow of Death. And in this next episode, we are um, going to cover where Christian is uh, meets up with, with his friend Faithful, and they have a conversation about where they've been um, up to this point. And it's really packed. There's a lot into it, uh, a lot that goes into it. So with this Pilgrim's Journey episode, we're going to actually do things a little bit differently because there's so much dialogue going on. We're going to have Paul do all the the faithful uh, character um, dialogue, <laughs> and I'm going to take uh, Christian's dialogue. And so we're just going to go back and forth. And hopefully it'll be a little bit more intriguing, um, more interesting. Even more intriguing. Even more Even interesting more in- than it was before. Because <laughs> uh, last time you guys were probably bored out of your... No. Um, so, yeah. Now, as Christian went on his way, he came to a slight ascent that was specially designed so that pilgrims could more easily see ahead of them. Therefore, Christian went up and looking forward, he saw faithful in the distance intent on his journey. Then did Christian call out loudly, Ho, ho, so, ho, which in the old English way, it means, Here, here, look here. Wait, let me catch up and I will be your companion. At this, Faithful looked behind him, causing Christian to again cry out, Wait, wait until I catch up with you. But Faithful replied, No, I travel with my life at stake and the avenger of blood is close behind. This reply somewhat moved Christian. So, mustering all his strength, he quickly caught up with Faithful and, in fact, raced past him so that at last, the, the last had become first. As a result, Christian smiled with a sense of self-congratulation. He felt proud of now being ahead of his brother, yet not paying attention to his feet. He suddenly stumbled and fell to the ground and was unable to get up, that is, until Faithful came up to help him. Then I saw in my dream that both of them went on very lovingly together and that they had a delightful conversation about all of the things that had happened to them on their pilgrimage. So, Christian spoke. My honored and well-beloved brother, Faithful, I am glad that I have caught up with you and that God has so tempered our spirits that we can walk as companions along such a pleasant pathway. Dear friend, I had thought of enjoying your company even from our town, but you did get quite a start on me. Therefore, I was forced to come this far on my own. For how long did you stay in the city of destruction? That is before you set out after me on your pilgrimage. Till I could stay no longer, since after you had departed, there was so much discussion concerning the near prospect of our city being burned to the ground by means of fire from heaven. Is that so? Did your neighbors really talk this way? Yes, this sober conversation was in everybody's mouth, at least for a while. But tell me, were there no more than yourself who came away to escape the danger? Uh, As I said, there was certainly a lot of talk going on, though I do not think that they really believed it. For in the heat of this exchange, I heard some of them speak of you with ridicule. Your pilgrimage was contemptuously called a desperate journey. Though I did believe, and still do, that the end of our city will be with fire and brimstone from above. So as a result, I made my escape. So what do you think of this uh, so far? Yeah, I think it's very... uh, Telling, of course, it's it's depicted in typical Pilgrim's Progress language, yeah. right? Where you have this city and, and a city of destruction and the whole town, as so though that's the only things going on in a town. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yet, I think if we look at as a Christian's life in our smaller circle of people that know us well, and especially people that that uh, are not Christians, when we become a Christian, um, it has this kind of shock wave in our home. Or, or in our neighborhood or in the people around us where people are kind of taken back and 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 like wow i mean what if that person that's close to me is is really a christian i remember friends of mine when i first came to know the lord uh and i talked to them why i became a christian and uh you know that i was a sinner that i was gonna go to hell uh that that christ came and saved me uh, it got a lot of people talking about it but as with uh, Christian here and with Faithful, um, 
there was a lot of talk and then it dimmed down. And then there was kind of well, not as much ridicule as an openly ridicule, but kind of a not understanding of uh, uh, what uh, uh, like like what I did or something like that. And so as I continued on, I found some of my friends coming to know the Lord mm-hmm. and we walked together and we had exactly this conversation, right? Where we're like, wow, in the beginning, there were so many people that were interested, but yeah. but quite a number of them have just gone back into the world. Uh, but praise the Lord that God has brought some of us out and uh-huh. we're on this journey together. Yeah, yeah. Do you have like the initial excitement, the initial spark? and everybody's intrigued and everything but then then we're still you know being led along by the spirit getting excited about it and then we see whoa like after we come because i'm in the young adult phase right now so i'm looking around and i'm seeing all my friends really really excited about pursuing the lord and studying it and everything that's that's going on but then we're looking around we're starting to see some of our other friends that you know uh some would get married and then they start to not be as passionate or start to go off the other side or um, some friends that are becoming transgender and um, some friends that have just, they just stopped going to church, you know, or they deconstructed. And I'm starting to kind of see that where it's like, whoa, we were initially, we were so excited. We were going on these missions trips. We were seeing God doing all these crazy things. Yeah. And and one of the things that I always recommend younger Christians, because often when somebody just comes to know the Lord, they want certain people to come to know the Lord, mm-hmm. but you never know who's going to come to know the Lord. Yeah. Right. So um, I've kind of began to advise people because uh, I often see this 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 kind of vision in my head, not a, a real vision, just this thought, right? Mm-hmm. Where you see a person like trying to like push one person up on a hill, and he's trying to get this one person up the hill, but the person just doesn't want to. Yeah. So the person is just pushing back. And a young Christian will try to get one specific person to come to know the Lord, and they're just pushing against each other. Well, there's a whole list of people, a whole line of people waiting behind them, asking him to help to for help to get up the hill. Yeah, right. And I think often that's kind of the um, the things that as as a young Christian, especially if you just come to know the Lord, um, you want to share the gospel. You have you have the fire of the Lord burning in your heart. Um, don't decide. Who's going to get out of the city of destruction? Yeah. Ask God to bring you to the people that need to hear the gospel. Yeah. Right? So uh, share the gospel with everybody, of course. But don't be fixated upon one person and then forget other people that might be hungering and thirsting to come to know the Lord. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, here you have, uh, and, and sometimes, and this is another encouragement for us. Uh, it doesn't say that Christian knew faithful. Mm-hmm. Right, I mean, he knew him, but he didn't know faithful was going to come to know the Lord, and now he sees that, right? So, uh, when Christian left the city of destruction, when he became a believer, faithful was not at that point, mm. right? It's only afterwards that he finds, and then he's like, "Oh, yeah, we're really, you know, off the same heart." Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason that faithful points to is because of Christian's message. Right, so when you are filled with the Lord and you're spreading the gospel, you might say, "Oh, I have such little fruit because I don't see people coming to know the Lord." And maybe your witness is actually going into the ears of somebody else that much later on you find out come to know the Lord. Mm-hmm. So it's an encouragement. Yeah. Did you hear of any talk concerning my neighbor Pliable? Yes, Christian. For I heard that he accompanied you till he came to the slough of the spot. There, as some have reported, he fell in. Even so, he would not let on about this, but I'm quite sure that he was thoroughly uh, bedaubed with the dirt of that place. And what did the neighbor say to him? Since his return, he has been the subject of considerable derision, and that by all sorts of people. Some quite mock and despise him, while scarcely anyone will give him employment. He is now seven times worse than if he had never departed from the city. But why is it that they were so set against him, especially since they also despised the way that he eventually abandoned? Oh, they said, hang him since he is a turncoat. He was not true to his profession. I think God has stirred up even his enemies to hiss at him so as to make him a proverb because he deserted the way. Did you ever talk with him before your departure? 
I did meet him once in the streets, but he only leered at me from a distance on the other side, as if ashamed of what he had done. So I did not actually speak to him. Well, when I first set out on pilgrimage, I did have some hope for that man. But now I fear he will perish in the imminent destruction of the city, just as his case is described according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his vomit again, and the sow that was washed has gone back to her wallowing in the mire. They are my fears for him as well. But who can hinder that which is to be? All right, so we have we have neighbor Pliable. Um, what is happening with um, Pliable, and uh, what do you see going on in this part? Yeah, so Pliable is is kind of like clay, right? Mm-hmm. However you need him and however you apply pressure to him, so to speak, he'll just shape with the, the strongest and the longest breath and voice, mm-hmm. um, whoever push him in whatever direction. So when he hears the Christian message, he's, oh yeah, persuaded. Then the world becomes stronger and louder and he's persuaded by the world. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are a young person like me listening, I think this is kind of the plague of our generation. Right, yeah. where we get pushed around by whoever speaks the loudest, whatever is the latest um, trend. Trend, yeah. Right, uh, we, we're constantly being pushed around. I mean, pliable is really the, the. This could be the pliable generation alive today. Yeah. Right. Um, and so the Bible speaks about uh, people being oaks of righteousness. That is the not pliable uh, figure. Right, the person that is steadfast that has its roots. In, into truth. So I think the way that they talk about pliable is very helpful for, for all of us. And I, I mean, in a, in a sense, it should be kind of a wake-up call of what kind of persons we are to be, right? We're not people that are being pushed and tossed with every wave of every teaching, but we need to be uh, putting the the roots of our faith into the waters of the Word and stand no matter what the, the conversation is otherwise we'll be exactly in the position that we're afraid of mm. right we're afraid that we might miss the latest trend so we're yeah you, know, you know you talk about friends that are interested in christianity they walk there and then after a while something else becomes more popular or the world around them presses and so they go there but they never belong to any of those groups uh-huh. right they still have the old ideas of uh, the world or Christianity, uh, and now they're into worldly things, and, and they're not home anywhere. Yeah. Well, they're looking for a home, and I think that's the sadness of uh, people that begin with Christianity and then reject it. They're always fighting for a place, but never arriving at it. Mm-hmm. While God opens the door to have an eternal place with Him, to be a a man or a woman of faith that will live forever. Huh. But you know. What if I'm a Christian and I'm trying to pursue God, um, but I just feel, you know, stuck in my own sin, stuck in my own ways, and I just, I kind of, I feel like I am pliable, but I don't want to be pliable, right? So I am being led by either driven by emotional feelings or desires, or I, or I'm just so like caught up in wow the the intellectuality of something, you know, and I want to replace that with having emotional feelings for God or filling myself up with all this knowledge and theology of scripture, but it's, it's just not helping me. How am I supposed to walk with the Lord? Like, how do I stop being like pliable if I really want to intentionally pursue God? Yeah. So I think, I think you kind of answer your own question a little bit with uh, inside the question. Yeah. Um, but the, I think what's the, the difficulty with pliable is he never gets beyond following Christian, mm. right? He, he never gets beyond uh, simply being interested uh, by what Christian has said. If you remember the story of Pliable, um, Christian gives all these promises, and, and Pliable is kind of like, "Oh, this is great, right? I love, I love all these things, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I, I'd be happy um, to be uh, moved into these these areas, um, but." Um, actually, let me skip that because I think that was not pliable. That was another character. Okay. Um, well, to to respond to your question, um, if you feel that uh, 
God is teaching you or, or that you want to follow God, but, but uh, you know, lusts are strong on you and, and all those kind of things. Um, grow up, be a man of the word and prayer. Mm. Right? I mean, that's really, I think, the problem of, of most people that feel like pliable Christians. First of all, pliable is not a Christian in this in this book, yeah. right? He has never actually entered into a real relationship with God. So let's say you have a real relationship with God, but you feel the pressures of sin, um, which we all do. The reason why some people uh, are in this endless wrestling match with sin is because um, they're not, they're, they keep holding on to two sides at the same time, right? They're not determining in their hearts, I'm going to follow God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength and not care about the things of this world. Mm -hmm. That needs to be the foundation of your heart, mm -hmm. right? And not, I'm going to be a cool Christian or a Christian that is acceptable in the world or a Christian that is, and you add something. No. On top of every trend, you know. Yeah, no, you got to be a biblical Christian yeah. or you're going to be a weak Christian or no Christian at all, mm -hmm. which, which the line is very thin between those. Right, so um, if you struggle with sin, and I don't mean uh, I'm walking with God and I'm facing temptations, but really kind of an in and out, you know, mm -hmm. like a pig back to the mud type of deal, um, you need to see how you view Christianity. If there's not a gaping hole in your faith that basically says, I want to add something into my Christianity that's, that's foreign, because you leave the door open. Yeah. Right. Uh, in uh, Cain and Abel, the story there, God tells Cain, uh, evil will try to master your heart, but you must resist it. Mm -hmm. And Cain obviously doesn't, and he kills his son and his, his brother, Abel. Uh, but the question really is uh, are you guarding your heart against evil? Or are you opening a door for it under the numer of, uh, I want to be a cool, trendy Christian? Yeah. Do we want to stop here? Sure. And the episode? Yeah. Okay. I think we got to get going. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there was so much that is packed into this uh, episode that we might have to stop in the middle of this chapter and we'll pick it up again for uh, when Faithful and Christian continue uh, recounting everything that's happened up to this point. And we're going to leave it at this, though. Um, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Pilgrim's Journey on the Pilgrim's Well. And we will see you guys next week. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Pilgrim's Well podcast. For more, be sure to follow us from wherever you're listening from, whether it be from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. To find us online, go to seventhref.org. We'll see you in the next episode.